Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn how to work with classes inside TypeScript. So let's jump right into it. So here I already prepared a project where we can write TypeScript code. And I already made a video on that, so if you missed that I will link it here on the top and in the description box below. So here we have source folder and main TS, this is where we are writing our TypeScript. And inside this folder our TypeScript transpiles our TypeScript code. And we also have here tsconfig.json where we have configuration for TypeScript. And here our root directory is source and our output directory is dist. So in JavaScript we have support of classes starting from ECMAScript 6. And actually it is just sugar for working with prototypes. And in exactly the same way it is working in TypeScript. But we have their typings. This is why working with classes in TypeScript is really awesome. So let's look on the example. So let's jump now in source main TS and create our first class. And to create a class we are using class word exactly like we are doing in JavaScript. So here is class user and we can write some properties inside it. For example let's say that we have inside property first name and we can directly say that this is string. And we have last name and it is also string. So the main difference from ECMAScript 6 that we are using here typings. So all knowledge that we have in TypeScript we can apply to classes. For example, let's create new method get full name, and we know that back we will get a string. And now inside we can return this first name because we know this is a string, and we concatenate it with string and then with this dot last name. So with this we can access all properties inside the class. We can also use constructor in exactly the same way. And we can provide some data as parameters in the constructor. For example, we can say that we are providing from outside when we are creating instances first name and last name. This is why first name string, actually this works like normal function in TypeScript, and here is last name and it is also string. Now inside we can assign our properties inside this. So this first name equals first name and this last name equals last name. Now we can create instances of class user. For example here we create our first user and for this we are using new user and we can provide our arguments here. And as you can see we directly get highlighting from TypeScript that in this class on initialize we need to give first name and last name and then we are getting back class user. So let's provide here for example monster and here will be lessons and save this. As you can see no errors because we provided everything correctly. Of course if we will provide here for example boolean then we will get an error argument of type true is not assignable to string. So our class is created as you can see now user is of type user and user is a class. This is why here we can write console log user dot and this is what we have. And this brings us to the next point why classes are so awesome inside TypeScript. So as you can see we are getting access directly to everything that we have inside class, to properties and the method. This is because everything is public. What is public? In normal languages like for example Java we have things like private, public and protected which means we can mark all properties and functions inside our class with these three words. And by default everything is public, which means we can use it everywhere, in the class, outside of the class, in childs, in instances, and this is exactly what we have now. We didn't write anything here, this is why everything is public. It is the same if we will write here public word and first name, so this is by default public. We can write here everywhere public, but it doesn't make any sense. If we will write somewhere private word, it will mean that we can use this variable or function only inside the class. And this is really awesome, because normally for example we have user and we want to make public only this get full name. And these two properties first name and last name we want to leave internal. And for this we can say here that it is private and this property is also private. 
As you can see, we don't have any errors because we are manipulating with these two properties only inside class. But here is our autocomplete. I am writing user and directly I see that I am allowed only to get full name. So I can't access here first name, it's just not possible we are getting error, property first name is private and only accessible inside class. And this is really awesome to separate what you can use inside class and what is allowed outside as a public. And in the same way we can use protected. And protected means that we can use these variables or functions inside children if we are doing inheritance. And we will look on inheritance in a second. But actually here we simply write protected and this is working exactly like private or public. But here is really important moment to remember. All this stuff like private, public, protected only exists inside TypeScript, which means when we are transpiling it to JavaScript, this is just normal JavaScript code on prototypes. So there are no checkings in runtime, no checks in JavaScript at all. So we can check it only type safe inside TypeScript. One more awesome thing that we can do inside classes is to use word read-only. So we can say here read-only and then for example unchangeable name and it will be string. And now we can set it once, for example in constructor we can write this unchangeable name equals first name and this is fine, as you can see we don't have any errors. But if we will create some method, for example change unchangeable name and inside this function, this is returning void, we are trying to set this unchangeable name to foo, we are getting an error. Cannot assign to unchangeable name because this is a read-only property. And this is really amazing when you want to create some constants. Inside your class you simply need to use read-only word, then it is marked and you will never forget that you can't change it. Let's comment this code out and speak about interfaces. If you missed my video regarding interfaces, I will link it here on the top and in the description box below. But basically the idea is that we can define an interface and then our class must implement it. So let's try this out. Here I will create an interface, user interface. And this is an interface for our class. And here we are saying that we must implement get full name method. In other case it won't work. And we are saying here that we are returning string. This is it. So this is just an interface with one function. Now inside here we can say implements and here the name of the interface, so user interface. In this case this class must create inside this function. In other case it won't work. So if I will just comment out get full name, we are getting directly an error. Class user incorrectly implements interface user interface. Property get full name is missing in type user, but required in user interface. And this is really amazing when you want to make something shareable and you want to require that all classes that want to use the shareable thing must implement your interface first. One more thing that you might need, but maybe not that often, is static properties. So actually here we can write that we have a static property and let's name it max age. And here max age is 50. And we even can say here read only, so we can't change it. And if you don't know, static properties are accessible only on the class itself, not on instances. This means that our user don't have property max age. So as you can see here, there is no max age. But here we can console log our class and this is user dot and as you can see here we have max age property. So static properties is something that you are getting on the class itself. And actually I'm not using them that often, but maybe you might need it at some point. And the last point which makes classes really awesome is inheritance. So we can create a class, for example user, and we can create a child of that class. So we create a class which inherits everything from user. So for this we can just create new class here on the bottom. So let's name it admin. And this will be class which is extending from class user. So just with this code we are getting all stuff that we have now inside user inside our class. So if you don't believe me, here we can create const admin and here we are making new admin. 
and inside we are providing foo and bar. And as you can see, it already worked because this is a constructor and we are providing something inside. Now we can write here console log admin dot and we are getting access to all properties that were defined inside our user class. And in inheritance, of course, we can override everything that we want or provide new methods. For example, here we can say that we need new private property editor and it is string. And now we can create two new methods, set editor, where we will set this editor. For example, here we are providing editor as a string, and we need to return void here. And here we are setting property this editor to the editor that we passed. And of course, we need then get editor function. And we are returning here string, and here we are returning directly this editor. And now only our admin has all these things inside because here is admin dot and here for example get editor set editor and of course property editor is not accessible because it is private and our user doesn't have all this logic. So this is inheritance, this is how it is working in ECMAScript 6, but with typings it's much much better, safer and easier to use. So as you can see, TypeScript gives us a really nice possibility to write classes like in JavaScript, but in more strict way, like Java or C Sharp maybe. And also, if you want to improve your programming knowledge, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like this video, consider watching it on increased speed, it might help. And I will see you in my next video.